Welcome to the exercise video for Module 2, the Scalability Finder. Um, moving forward, what you're going to see with these exercise videos is this is the inside of the portal. If um, I were to be working one-on-one -on -one with a client as their business coach moving through the Value Builder system, you would have access to your own portal that I create for you. And we would, when in our regular meetings, we would be going through these exercises together. Uh, what comes included with the one-on-one -on -one coaching is access to the software platform where we track everything. We can set up exercises, action items, set dates to them, assign them to people, but we also go through each of the modules. There's trainings, there's exercises, and there's a way to track your progress as you go through with the one-on-one -on -one coaching besides meeting regularly and, and going through the training and the coaching that way. There's also the software platform to back us up. So what I'm going to show everyone for the sake of ease is how to go through the exercises as if you were a one-on-one -on -one coaching client. Now, obviously, um, unless you decide to you know, go away from the digital program and engage one-on-one, -on -one, if my schedule allows it, you'd be able to use this. Otherwise, you can duplicate any of these exercises manually. So let's get, let's get into it. Um, this one from module two, the scalability finder. In this exercise, it's going to help you identify your products and services that have the potential to scale up the fastest. This session, uh, the intent is to give you a roadmap of the products and services that you can offer that'll help you grow your company while minimizing its dependence on you personally. And that's important. So let's start the exercise. And what you'd want to do, uh, if you're doing this manually is make a list of products and services that you provide today. Cause this is also going to give you a snapshot of where you are now. It'll also start to generate ideas, but let's pretend uh, we're an AC product, uh, an air conditioning company, HVAC, um, offering pretty much the full gamut of everything that they offer for the sake of this example. So we'd be offering AC repair. Uh, we'd be offering AC maintenance. We'd be offering AC replacement. We'd be offering AC contracts, which could be part of maintenance, but it may not. I know there are companies who will come out and do a maintenance call, which may not be a repair. And then there's some that are under contract and will get the maintenance as well, but they are two separate individual things. So try and list all of them up to 20 um, products and services. So if you have a, you sell a product, but you have a follow-up support that you offer, it's not a product, that's a service. Make sure you list everything. Let's go on to the next step. Step two is the teachability rating. This is where you're going to rate these. Now, whether you do this manually on paper or you do it in a spreadsheet, you can want to use the numbers one to five. And you're going to rate these products and services on a scale of one to five, where five is given to those products and services that are easy for you to teach employees to sell and deliver. So it's teachable and duplicable. And one is given to the products and services that you must personally get involved with, either selling or providing. So one is least teachable, five being more teachable. So in our example of AC repair, typically you have to go get some sort of certification and schooling. Um, to learn this. And then if you go to a company, they might offer their own training. So it's, it's pretty teachable. Um, maintenance, similar replacement, um, might be a little harder, might be different type of training. Not everyone would do the replacement. So we'll put that as a little less. The contracts, they're the most teachable because you don't have to be certified uh, as an AC, HVAC repair tech. Um, to be able to sell contracts. That's, that's the most teachable right there. Step three, rate the degree of product or service differentiation. So now we're going to rate these products or services on a scale of one to five, where five is given to the products, services that your customers view as valuable coming from your company, or they're highly differentiating. They like the product or the service, and they see your company as uniquely qualified to provide it. One is given to the products or services that are commodities and where your customer has many alternatives for buying the product or service and can easily purchase from your competitors. 
So in terms of AC repair, probably more of a commodity than highly differentiating. Maintenance, uh, similar. Replacement might put you more middle of the road. Um, and contracts might make you definitely differentiating because not every company is going to be able to offer you that in terms of how differentiating you are and and have the be in a position with the resources to back up selling contracts. Now the last stage of this scalability is to rate at which your customers repurchase. So it's one to five again. Um, five is where given to your products or services that your customers need regularly. One is given your products or services that your customers only need ever once. So rarely or never to regularly. AC repair, um, probably rarely or never. Maintenance, fairly regularly. Replacement, rare. Contracts are probably going to be regular for sure. Because whether the, then whether they get engaged, they have the maintenance, or they need replacement, they're probably going to have a contract on the, on, on the unit and the appliance. So now we go look at the results. And what, what this program does when I'm working with one-on-one -on -one clients is it'll create a chart for us, for us to look at. And then, of course, my one-on-one -on -one clients get to, we can edit it, we export it, print it, what have you. But it's an Ansoff matrix. It, it's built into four quadrants with the... Point zero here being this is where your least teachable and commodity come into play and this it's this four quadrants so the bottom left is your least potential then on the x-axis I believe that's right is the teachability scale whereas we move further away from zero it's the most teachable when we move further away from commodity down the right of the y-axis it's highly differentiating if that's your degree of differentiation here the Far right, bottom right quadrant is, is highly differentiating. Um, you're most teachable up here. But the where you want to look is, you're, is running this way, is right through the middle of this chart. So that right here in this, uh, the top right quadrant is our target quadrant. That's where you have your highest potential because it's the most teachable as well as highly differentiating. And based on the color coding, which you can do on your own, it's about your repurchase rate. Obviously, you're looking for something that's purchased more regularly that is also the most teachable and your customers would consider the most highly differentiating. That's what we're trying to break down in this exercise. Which of the existing products and services you have are most teachable, so it gets you away from working in your business and working on your business, What's also considered the most valuable or differentiates yourself to your customer that and is also purchased more regularly than other products. So between those three qualifying, um, those three qualifying um, parameters is how you're going to judge what's going to fall into that top right quadrant. And AC contracts in our example does. So that's where you'd want to focus your attention in the scalability finder of the exercise to that has your highest potential for growth because that's what we're looking to do. And what this exercise also does, it starts to bring to light things we're offering, both products and services, and kind of where they stand in the spectrum of things, where, where they stand on the hierarchy of importance. It also could generate and it should generate ideas of what some things we could offer maybe a new product or service that could be very teachable, customers could use on a regular basis, and they would consider very highly differentiating coming from us, where it's not a commodity. So it's a dual-fold purpose of this exercise. Shed some light on what you have existing and also put light into the darkness of what you don't have and what your potential is. But either way, you should be able to walk away from this exercise with a great idea of what your highest potential for growth is and scalability. I'll see you in the next video.